So welcome back. This is session five, and I'm working on questions from Reagan and Lipsy's 12th edition, Microeconomics. Now this is looking at the chapter for consumer behavior. And if you go to the uh, web address below, you'll see the web address below, and you'll have about 15, they'll have 15 multiple choice questions per chapter. And I try and do about five or so questions, and I try and choose questions that are universal so that if you're using a different textbook, it'll be applicable for you as well. And I try and choose questions that sort of focus on the fundamentals, because if we go over the fundamentals together, you'll be that much better when you see questions that you've never seen before. So again, this is the 12th edition of Reagan and Lipsy, and you can go, go to that website, you can do the other questions if you want, and they show you all the answers. And what I do in, the, in these videos is I give you some background and we go over the fundamentals together. So first thing we want to look at here is we want to look at um, this question is talking about maximizing utility. Okay, so we want to maximize the utility, but we have to allocate the expenditures in such a way. So we're we're looking at uh, uh, buying items, and what comes with it into play is our budget as well. But if we want to maximize utility, we have to do this little principle, which is the marginal utility of all goods per dollar spent must be equal. Okay, so let's take a look at what I mean by this notation here. So this first one is saying the marginal utility of good X divided by the price of X must be equal to the marginal utility of Y divided by the price of Y. Okay, first up, what we're talking about for, for MU, MU uh, means marginal uh, utility. Okay, and marginal means one more or additional. And marginal will come up a lot in, in your microeconomics course. So marginal means one more or additional. And utility is the satisfaction that you get from consuming. Right? So it's the satisfaction, the enjoyment that you get from consuming items. Now take a look here. You'll notice that it's divided by price. You don't just choose uh, the item that just is going to give you the most enjoyment. We have to take into consideration the price. So it's not maximizing uh, utility, um, we're trying to maximize the utility per dollar spent, okay, because we have uh, what we call a budget. So we've got to keep our budget in mind. So for example, let's say you, you're at a, um, a concession stand or, or a fast food place and you see that the burgers, let's say that a burger uh, gives uh, 60 units of enjoyment, as some textbooks will call that util, so 60 units uh, of enjoyment, and the drink Okay, let's say the drink gives uh, 20 units of enjoyment. What we're saying is, you can't just choose this burger here. You can't just say, oh, well, hey, the burger gives me uh, six extra units of enjoyment. I'm just going to choose the burger. What we're saying is, no, 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 no. We've got to factor in the prices. And I'll just make up some prices. Let's say burgers are $5, and let's say drinks are a dollar. Okay, so we would divide this by its price, which is $5, and divide this by its price, which is a dollar. So what we're seeing with the drink, take a look at the drink, it's saying it's giving us 20 units of enjoyment for the dollar. So it's adding 20 units of enjoyment for the dollar if we choose this drink here. But, take a look here, how many units of enjoyment for the dollar does the burger give us? Well if you take a look, we've got to reduce it so that it's in the same kind of uh, per dollar uh, basis because it's giving us 60 units of enjoyment for five dollars. Well what does it give us for uh, per dollar? Well, if we reduce this, divide both sides by 5, you'll get 12 units of enjoyment for the dollar if we reduce this here. Okay, so so initially the burger looked the best, but on a per dollar basis, it looks like the drink would be better for us. Now, the interesting thing about um, why they must equate is right now, the, the if you're choosing between the two, it looks like the drink is a better alternative. It's going to add 20 units of enjoyment for the dollar. But once you've had that drink, remember there's diminishing marginal utility. So if you're comparing the burger, you would be comparing the burger to the second drink. And the second drink wouldn't have 20 units of enjoyment for the dollar. It may have 15 units of enjoyment for the dollar because of diminishing marginal utility. And remember, diminishing marginal utility means the first slice of pizza gives you lots of enjoyment. The second slice of pizza gives you, oh, you know, it's, it's satisfying. Third one, that was good, but I'm getting a little full. Fourth one, I, I liked it, so you're getting less and less enjoyment as you cons consume sex su successive units of a good, in this case here. Okay, so, so what we have to, um, if we want to uh, maximize our utility, we've got to keep in mind that we must equate the marginal utility per dollar spent. All right, so if we look at our answers here, it's looking at the average utility. Well, the, the, um, 
if you look at the uh, equation for maximization, it doesn't say anything about average utility, so we can cross that off. Uh, B, the marginal utility from each good is equal. Again, uh, that's not true, it's, it's per dollar. The utility received from the last unit of each good is equal. Well, the, that's talking about the marginal utility of the last good is equal. Oh, sorry, it's talking about the utility received from the last unit is equal. And again, it's not it's not factoring in price. Uh, D, the total utility from each good is equal. Well, it's, we're not equating total utilities. Uh, e, the utility received per dollar spent on the last unit of each uh, good is equal. And this one is our, our correct answer for that one. E. Let's take a look at the next one. So question four is saying, suppose Kim can consume books, bananas, and bread. And here's here's the key here. If Kim increases her consumptions of bananas, caribus, uh, paribus. So caribus, paribus is Latin for keeping everything else constant or keeping everything else equal. It means that we don't change anything else. All we're saying is just increase bananas and leave everything else the same. Then what does utility theory assume about that? Well, if she's increasing her consumption of bananas, so for example, we'll have uh, utils uh, here, and we'll have um, so the number of uh, bananas. Okay, so her first banana may give her uh, 20 utils of enjoyment, and the second one would maybe give her 18 units of enjoyment. The third one perhaps will give 14 units of enjoyment, and the fourth one Okay, may give her, uh, let's just say, uh, eight units of enjoyment. Okay, I'm making up these numbers, but what we're not making up is that the utility for each one, okay, is falling. Okay, so this is this is what we can call our our, uh, our marginal utility. Okay, so the first one adds 20, second one adds 18 to the total, third one adds 14, uh, and the fourth one adds eight to our total utility. So our total utility is growing, but it's growing by less and less each time because we don't enjoy the third banana as much as the first banana. And this is what we call uh, diminishing marginal utility. So the saying that the utility theory assumes that the marginal utility, and this one here, uh, A of bananas decreases due to diminishing marginal utility. Okay, so oranges wouldn't make any sense in this case here. Um, well, for one, it's it's not even uh, it's not even any of the goods mentioned. But remember, we held everything constant, right? Uh, bread decreases again. It wouldn't decrease because we held everything constant. Books, banana, and bread all increase. Well, no, the only thing that's going to change is the one that is changing, which is increasing the consumption of bananas. And E is wrong for the same reason as well. Okay, so that leaves us with A for the correct answer for number four. Let's take a look at the next one. 7 is looking at the substitution effect of a price fall. Well, let's talk about the substitution effect. What we're saying, and, and the substitution effect is responsible for the law of demand. So if you remember from before, the law of demand was saying that if we reduce the price, holding everything else constant, then we increase the quantity demanded. And if we increase the price, holding everything else constant, we reduce the quantity demanded. So this is the inverse relationship, the law of demand that we're talking about. So what we're saying for the substitution effect is that if we decrease the price of an item holding everything else constant, the quantity demanded of that item, okay, is going to increase. All right, so it's cheaper now, so we buy more. So we put something on sale, and in, in most cases we're going to buy more. And that's, you know, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time that's going to happen. Okay, and this is this is what we call in this case here uh, substituting towards. Okay, so we're buying more of this good because it's on sale, and we're substituting towards it. So we're buying less of other stuff, and we're substituting towards that item. Now, just for completeness, we'll show you if the price increases, we said due to law of demand that the quantity demanded decreases. And this is what we're doing. We're substituting, but we're going to substitute away from that item. Okay, so for example, if the price of cherries goes up dramatically, people are going to buy more blueberries, they're going to buy more oranges, more bananas. They're shifting away, they're substituting away in this case here. Let's take a look and see which one looks the best of the, of the particular answers. So let's look at 7a. So the substitution effect of a price fall increases the quantity demand of the good whose price fell. 
Okay, so this one looks good. It increases the quantity of demand of the good whose price fell. So we'll we'll circle that one because that's what the law of demand is is telling us. Uh, let's look at the other ones for completeness. B increases the quantity of demand of all the goods. No, we're just looking at uh, that particular good because the substitution effect we're going to hold everything else constant. Okay, so remember, um, if the price falls, it doesn't make all the other goods more appealing because uh, that's what B is saying. C decreases the quantity of demand of all the other goods whose price who did not fall in this case here. Well, that's not what the substitution effect is talking about. It's talking about what happens to that particular price, or sorry, that particular item whose price fell. So we can get rid of that one. Decreases the quantity of demand of the good whose price fell. Well, this one violates the law of demand. It's saying that the, that the price fell and people bought uh, less of that. Well, that doesn't happen. The law of demand is saying that if you hold everything else constant, if you drop the price of something, which is what happened in this question, if you drop the price, then what we're going to find is people buy more. This one's saying people are buying uh, less of, of that particular or, or fewer of those items. And that's, that's not true. That's violating the law of demand. And since we do have an answer for A, we can cross off E for that one. All right, so that's what we're looking at for this particular one. And we'll finish off the rest of the questions for consumer behavior in the next following video.